I am asked to share who I am. So it's just different facets of me. But it mustn't be so self-centered that nobody else is, is uh, interested find in. that yeah. they are in that. You have to make yeah. it in a way. And sometimes that happens by itself. If you're personal and honest enough, people say, hey, that's yeah. how I that's feel too. too. Yeah. yeah. But the camera, I think, is very much part of uh, what I like to do because it's somebody coming very close and you can sort of present what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you want to convey. To me, a camera is not a machine. To me, a camera is people um, looking, listening. So when you said that you go from instinct mm -hmm. as, as an actress, and I assume then you're going to go from instinct as a director for your actors. Yes, because my instinct, I don't know the, maybe the right word for it in English. Instinct, that is me. I mean, you have a very wonderful, wonderful writer in, in the United States, E.M. Forster, and he said the most important thing in life is to connect. And to connect, maybe it's your instinct or whatever it is, but it is what is deepest within you, you know. When I look at you and I see you listen and you smile back, then I want to say more. And then when you talk and the same happens to me, we connect and maybe it's instinct or whatever, but it is us communicating. I just want to be happy and to connect whatever I'm doing. And you but silence doesn't bother me. Words does very often because I think they are confusing. They are unclear, and they are very seldom what the whole thing is about. They come in between instead. A silence to me is great. I love people, friends, because you can be silent with them. Oh no, you can learn everything, but the seeds of understanding, I think, are, are inside us. Otherwise, we could just sit down. I think it's very important to to learn, to take from whatever happens to you. But I think part of that is that a lot of things all the time happen to you. And some people are very aware, they live a life very aware. So when the moment is there, they know about the moment and they live the moment or they do the moment. Other people with the same kind of maybe possibility they never see the moments because they're not aware of them. No, there are many weak and uh, ma many weak directors around who don't know how to give direction and who give, if not freedom, you know, they give so wrong directions that you have to direct yourself. They should have somebody who's just looking at them and recognizing them. It is a very vulnerable position to be an actor because you can, in fact, be used, you know, sometimes by directors who, you know, have thought of everything in their, their home and they come and say, you come in and you breathe like this and you say your lines and then you go out and slam the door and then you feel silly because then you are a kind of cattle or furniture that is moved around. But the older you get, the more maybe you can avoid that to happen because the more respect you also have as an actor and the more you dare to suggest yourself and the more you also dare to put your foot down. I don't like to work if I don't trust the people I'm working with because to, to be an actress or director or whatever, if I feel that we are not truthful to each other, it's, it's no no good, you know. I, I did a movie where I felt I was asked to do it as an actress and I felt the, the director maybe didn't really want what I had to give. He wanted something he had in his head and wanted me to do it that way and I'm too old to, to do what somebody else did of a homework. If they want me they should use me and be truthful about that. So. Uh, I trust that that director didn't work so well for me. From the bad directors is where I really learned something because I know how <laughs> like not what? to. How what not to do? Not 
what not to do. For example, with the actors, you don't clamp in on somebody's fantasy life with big elephant feet and says, no, I want you to do it exactly this way and in this rhythm because that's the way I yeah. want to do it. On the contrary, you know. Give them an opportunity to express themselves and then, if, yeah. and then, and then what? Good, so be a good listener, be a good lover. The best lover is the one who looks at you and yeah. thinks, what a marvelous person, and you feel that, and you yeah. just want to bloom in Wait, front of that person. let me get this straight now. The best lover is? Somebody who really looks at you and who really listens at you and makes you feel, I, I'm recognized, this person sees me. And so you really want to, to give more. And when you give more, that person really shows, oh, yes. And, and it's like... Um, a dance of, of recognition. That's uh, that's what directing is. And you that's know, what you can give, and you can give that to to men and women as a director. You must actually even more to men as a woman director than a man director sometimes can do because men have to have this facade for each other. You know, they yeah, have to be right. kind of strong and and whatever. So a man director and so a man actor. So you eliminate actor. the contest. Absolutely, a woman with a man can really make him feel safe and he's used to the situation you know man yeah. woman in and by itself one layer is taken off so i i believe the best of women directors can get even better performances of course there are men directors who have a lot of those feminine qualities who get the same but i think it's who can use whatever femininity is within them to bring out the best in exactly. their actors exactly but and i think i th it must be the same in your job the the best interviewer is the one who makes the person they are talking to feel that whatever they have to say that's interesting yeah. I, I never heard this before and I'd like to hear more sometimes you hear too much but you know <laughs> no, that's uh, a chance you uh, have to take but it's a catalyst for making that it is tapping into their passion so that, that you eliminate all those things that get in the way of them being themselves and 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 motivate them and mobilize their own energy to you know, to give the most that they have. I mean, that's similar to acting, I say. A great director has to find whatever it is in there and make sure that it comes out. Exactly. You know? And, yeah, exactly. And make them feel safe. And you choose the actors, you choose the set director, the cinematographer, because they are the best. So that's what you have to use. They're not to be a blueprint of you, you know. Yeah. You, you get the opportunity to have all their talent and in the end put it on your canvas it's yeah. it's your colors uh, you know that you can mix but the colors really came from them and that's the magic of it and that's why it's so incredibly fun it, it's such a, a joy yeah. i have worked with some good directors in films not only ingmar bergman and i worked with very good directors in the theater but there aren't that many in either in film or or theater. I would say working with Ingmar Bergman because he allows me to use everything which is creative within me. He probably has allowed me to use as much as I know about my craft. There is no secrets anymore of things that has not been challenged. He allows me to be challenged, and if I am not, it's my fault, it is not him. But he does not challenge me by being this demon that he's been told, or like you sometimes see, he's leading people by the arm, it's not true at all, you know. He is there as an inspiration and with a script, and because you know he's so great, you want to give him as much as you can. And I've, I've used to make a parallel. If you are with a lover who really loves you and is looking at you, of course, then you are so open and so good and you feel so beautiful and you give everything you have. And that is the difference to being with a lover who tells you exactly what to do and is looking at the watch and wants it the way he thought it should be at home. That is the whole difference. He has allowed me to, to find out really what I can do with my craft. I have tremendous admiration for him. And I also um, have a lot of curiosity not only what 
what he can still do in life, but also what I can show him that I can still do in life. It's like when you are grown up, you sometimes think, oh, I wish my teacher would see this. And uh, I often think so, you know. Oh, I look forward to Ingmar seeing this and, and hear what he says about that. Life, in fact, as you say, goes hand in hand with your profession. And uh, a good director, as he will always use the person he has, listen to the person he has, watch the person he has as an actor and use what he sees and what he hears and he won't push his own personality. Sometimes when we live together it could be painful because if we maybe had quarreled and, and so I would be more occupied with that during working than the actual working. Whereas now, when we don't live together, we've made seven films or so, you know, if he is angry on the set, I don't care. I, I see it's Ingmar is angry again, and I, I know I don't have to go home with that. I like to be with great personalities. I like to, to work with great personalities. I suffer sometimes when I always have to answer questions about Ingmar Bergman as if, you know, he was the creator and everybody else around him were clay because of course that's not how it is because all the best directors will always use the talent they have, the, the photographer, the actors, the light people, everything and use all the best they they have to give. I mean, that is the sign of a good director, to use everybody's ability to the fullest and even more, to see in you that you can't only give what you're showing now, but that there's more inside and sort of not even coach you, but listen it out, watch it out, make you want to show more. That's a good director. And you don't suffer under that, on the contrary, it's like being with somebody very, very interesting, very, very powerful, where you suddenly hear you're starting to say things that you hadn't thought about before, and where you go from that meeting a little more enriched. Yeah, it makes it much easier, and it's very much part of it once you've written the script. That is what the directing is about, because the characters belong to you in a very different way, if you can kill them off if you feel like it yes. because you yeah. wrote them. What's the satisfaction of directing? What did you find that you liked about it so much? That it you know what I, I liked? I was afraid maybe I would feel, oh, I wish I could do that yeah. part or maybe want them to do the way I would have done it. And it was the opposite when I talk about the actors. It was really to sit on the other side and take enjoyment in seeing other actors just create and you are there to make the atmosphere as good as possible, wonderful blocking or whatever they need it and just yeah. give them trust and love and see them bloom and then use all that, all the best and put it yeah. in your painting. Yeah. If you are a director, you have to be on the other side. You have to view everybody from the other side. And if I was starring in it, you know, I would in the editing room, cutting the movie, I would think, oh, I'm so good here, I think I'll keep that, even <laughs> if it wasn't right for the movie. Uh, you know, we are vain, we <laughs> actors too. It's good for a woman especially to learn to be a boss and that you cannot make everybody yeah. like you, that you, you really have to be in charge, do your homework, and, and a whole team has to mm. kind of, you are responsible for them doing their best. Interesting. I don't find that your destiny is really where your feet are at the moment. I think your destiny is who you are at the moment and what you are bringing to the moment. I think your destiny is very much where your roots were, where you grew up, what you relate to as a person because that's what you were used to as a child. But I think later traveling doesn't necessarily change your destiny, because I think your destiny is within. No, I don't know myself. I know certain things about myself. 
I know certain things that I would like to be. I know certain things that people think I am. And then I'm everything that, for example, you see. But I certainly don't know myself, and I certainly think I am changing. That is why the book is called Changing, because I think you are always going ahead. You are always on the on ebb and the flow. You are always doing your thing in life, and it's never status quo. When it is status quo, your life is sort of over. Because the thing is that the search must always be there because there is no ultimate goal, there is no ultimate facet. As long as you are here, it is important to, to go on, explore. It doesn't have to be in big things. It doesn't say that if you are a housewife, you cannot have a wonderful, rich life and be searching and feeling enormously fulfilled and give a lot to, to other people. That's a good force in life that you keep on looking because you feel life should have a meaning right. and I'm looking for it. But uh, somehow it also stops you from stopping up yeah. in case you find it. You know, if you're running all the time, you won't even know. You that might not you even know I wanted to hit you. Past you know? it, yeah. And, and also there is this thing of whether some people are always need to prove themselves for whatever reason. That I, I can climb this mountain and that mountain and that mountain and that mountain. You know, show me a mountain and I'll show you I can climb it. Whether it's doing all the work you do for UNICEF or writing a book or directing a film or, or, or acting on Broadway, all that stuff. Yeah, you don't have that. Maybe, because I lie a lot to myself. You do? Yeah, because immediately you when you say... You lie to yourself? Sure, or you fool yourself you? about... Oh, I'm sure I do, but I'm not sure I can tell you how. No, I can't either, but immediately when you said that, I would say, no, I, you know, I, I don't want to prove anything. Maybe I want to prove a lot, because I was shy and awkward. Could, nobody wanted to dance with me or date me when I was really young, and maybe I'm still trying to prove something. That and you're worthy, that, that, hey, they hey, were so wrong. That they were wrong. Because I, I remember am. once when I was 17, yes. I sat at the round table with a yes. lot of young people and they were all going to say what they wanted to do with their life when they were, you know, yeah. grown up. And when it came to me, they just jumped me because that they wasn't even feasible <laughs> that that had any interest. I think somehow I'm still trying to show that. That you should have come to me and given me a chance to show you what I'm going to do. Because you would exactly. have said to them, I'm no. going to be a famous film actress and I'm going to make yeah. movies and I'm going to direct films and I'll be well known exactly. because of my humanitarian and compassion And instinct. that's stupid that I would still be thinking about all those people. So that's when I write this but book about... Bitterness, uh, luckily, is not part of my character. Anger is. I can be extremely angry when I really get angry, but I can't keep it. I'm unable to restore, restore an anger and I think that is good. Can you hate? Yeah, just momentarily, while I'm angry, I really hate, but I can't keep hate. It's when you keep hate, you get the bitterness, and that's your worst enemy. And hating is, you know, so negative and so destructive, and not worthy of whatever person you hate, because if you hate them so much, they can't be very good, and why waste your time? Hating them, you know. No, I don't think I can. Somewhere, every experience you have, although shared, you see it with a little different eyes than the other person. And the moment you start talking about what you see, you will suddenly see that that person sees green differently than you, and this very strange little feeling of loneliness. You, you don't think it's the same? Isolated and lonely? Yes. Oh, no. Because lonely, I think, is, is a human factor. You can't escape that. And it's out of loneliness and solitude. Maybe the best thoughts and the best things happen. And accepting loneliness is also very important because that doesn't remove you from other people and make you feel more of an outsider. Knowing that everybody somewhere are a little lonely makes you actually closer to other people, more able to share with other people. It's very important to know in life that everybody you meet 
in a certain way you touch, you invade the privacy. You're well, right, a stranger can, can be an enemy if the stranger does not take care of that he is. I didn't say a stranger was an enemy, I just said the stranger is not a human being. Oh, well, there I don't agree with you. But a stranger can be dangerous. I think every stranger is a human being, everybody you meet. And I, to me, that is very important. You must regard everybody you meet as a human being with a past, and you don't know what they know is. So you must thread very, very carefully, because you might be on virgin or very sensitive. So... I don't know anything about computers or ebook or whatever they are called. Neither did Ingmar. It's, you know, it's okay for him that he's gone because this world would have really <laughs> made him nervous. It really would. It because you put these cameras on when I didn't even know about it, and I just had had some salad, and I oh I was wondering, do I have salad in my teeth? And I had no idea that I was filmed. Yeah. It's for me, a little insecure world to be in now because I don't know when, when people are taking you, raping you without you even knowing. But you were kind enough; you took it. You said, "I'll, I'll yeah. take it away <laughs> before I'm on YouTube with the green yeah, teeth." <laughs> it's interesting a little bit. You say that Bergman would wouldn't wouldn't like the world as it exists today. Do, do you well, think he, he would, would like we were much in the world. He wouldn't like this. The technology. Side oh no this. way! No way! Why not? Do you, do you think Picasso would have liked uh, that the paintings would now be made digitally and we uh, no you know creation is uh, is movement it's time it's experience it's watching each other it's listening to each other it is not do 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 and somebody else do 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 that's not what it is and it's incredible for the people now who are incredible doing this and it makes a lot of us other of completely on the outside. I'm not criticizing it. I'm just saying that for those of us who don't want to do this, it is a little strange. You feel like a little strange in the world. And I know Bergman more than anything. And you will see it in this documentary because some of it is from Ingmar's letters to me. And it's beautiful letters and it's his handwriting and it's little hearts and it's a little wrinkly if it has been read a lot and so that's lost in 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 this world there's a value in the tangible exactly i want to find out why nobody has time for anything anymore although we live so much longer and we have the faxes and we have the mm. telephones and we have all these things. all these things that should make life more efficient Exactly. We and then fill our, we fill our lives with other things, notwithstanding time savers. We continue to fill our life out. Don't take time. Right. You know, the cliche is to smell the roses, but there are other things. But you see, that in the end isn't a cliche. It would be wonderful to have time to go out and smell roses. I think the real life force, that really is to do these things we secretly dream about, you know, to run in the grass and smell roses and yeah. watch sunsets. Um, what would you like future generations to see in in Bergman's films? And I would like them to know what movie is when it's filmed, not like, not made maybe in other ways, when it's filmed and where many people come together and the room goes dark and then something happens up there on the screen and all these people in the dark they are experiencing something together up there. And it lasts maybe two hours, one and a half, two and a half hours. It's shared and, and you walk out and you can talk about it or you can carry it with you and, and think about it. But part of the value is that people together in a dark room are experiencing something together. It's not a lone thing. It's experiencing together. That's different than a painting. A painting you can experience all alone. Film, I think the way it was made is also a shared experience. It's the breathing, it's the laughing, it's you can hear some sniff. I just wish if people get to be interested in Bergman, if they have not been it before, yes, I think what you are doing is 
very interesting and very good if people then want to meet him also in another way because they get curious why did he make this movie for what media in what way did he want you to see it originally and then they will go and do it that way if people forget that it's difficult and strange if they just sit there and 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 watch the movies what the movie what the people are saying they will suddenly see this is about me too these are strange thoughts i have lovely thoughts i have sad thoughts i have and yes i am listened to i'm seen recognized recognition with recognition of who they are the most the goodest things in my life uh, somehow came to me so, but then I've also been smart because when something happens I always jump into it I've, I've been singing and dancing in the lead on Broadway right. without knowing really how to sing and dance but I didn't say no so I got the experience to do Richard Rogers last musical and if I had been a little more clever I would have said more no but then I wouldn't have had so much fun and I would have said no to direct this movie because at that because time. Because you might have some, well, yeah. why? Because I would have thought, oh, I don't know about that, yeah. you know, and instead I thought, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's, uh, that's Any good. great regrets? Only, I think, for things I, uh, I didn't do, things I didn't uh, It's always that way, do. isn't it? It is never. I mean, people inevitably say, you know, it's not what I regret what I didn't do rather than what I might have failed at, what I might have screwed up, or what brought me enormous satisfaction and joy. Exactly. It is always what you didn't do. I mean, it's like people, I mean, I, I have the most admiration for those people who say, why'd you do this? I did this because I didn't want to die having not tried. Yes. I had to tell myself, could I climb this mountain or swim this river? Have or, you tried everything you really wanted me? to try? No, but I mean, I, but I pretty much make an effort at it. I mean, right. But I'm also willing to risk failure too, so I mean, I'm not concerned about failure. No, neither am I. You know. Failure, when I mean, you I, look back at it, you know, you can at least get a good laugh. Uh, you, are you sure you can? Yeah. A good laugh or you can learn from it or you can look and say how silly that was. That for, how silly it was that I even worried about it or was serious about it. Exactly. Because it just continues and moves on and it, the t wheel takes another turn. Excellent. What's yeah. been the best moment for you? I mean, when, I mean, if you could say, I felt, the, you know. When I looked into somebody's eyes, who really loved me and said so, and I felt I love you too, and I'm happy to to be here for you. That I think all the best moments in life has been connected with love, whether it was with a man or with my child or with somebody I just met, and it was just this uh, human thing. I think. That's the most precious. I think it is for everybody, as important as water and, and, and food. Air. And air. Much success. It's great to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.